Today we're going to talk about how to wire our Festo Didactic MechLab conveyor to our PLC trainer. In this video, we are using our Micro 850 version of our PLC trainer, but this will work with the Micro 820 and our Compact Logics PLC trainer. I've really enjoyed working with this Festo Didactic system, and I can't tell you how much you really can learn with this Easy Mini. But in this one, we are gonna talk about how can we take and wire this to a physical PLC. And no, in typical TW fashion, we're not gonna use any wiring diagrams. We are just gonna have a connector with a pigtail on the end of it and think through it. All your connections come to this breakout module and this is a Festo MPV-E-A12-M8. Your even numbers are gonna be your inputs and your odd numbers are gonna be your outputs. Looking a little closer, these are what we call M8 connectors, and these are very standard sensor connectors. And this one has three pins. The next thing we need to know is what type of sensors and what type of output loads do we have? So these are PNP sensors. And going back to our diagram from our sinking and sourcing video, if we have a PNP sensor, then our PLC input is going to need to be sinking. And I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. But put your hand over the type of input or output you're wiring. Your hand represents the PLC. What's left is how you wire your circuit. So if I just scroll down a little bit, that'll simulate me putting my hand over my PLC. And yeah, we know that we're already getting plus 24 up to our sensor. It's going to be putting that 24 volt out to our input. And then most commonly ever look though, we need to take a wire from the common of our PLC back to the minus. Next, let's look at the details of the MPV-E slash A12M8. That's this right here. And if we scroll down a little bit, here are our pinouts. Now notice plus 24 volt is pin 13 here. Plus 24 volts also pin 13 here, here, and all the way through. So if we put plus 24 volt on pin 13, that's going to put power on all the pin ones of that module. Same with our zero volt. It's on 14 or 15, so just choose one of them. And that will put zero volt on pin three of all our modules. And that will leave us pin four to work with. And then I've already figured out the color codes of this particular cable. And if you need this cable, I'll put a link to one you can use down in the description. But plus 24 needs to be on the white wire. And zero volt needs to be on the pink wire. On our PLC trainer, the left set of terminals is the plus 24 volt. The right set is the zero volt. So I'm going to take the white wire, push it in, and the pink will go into one of the minuses. And we're going to add this along with our getting started wire because chances are we'll end up building some of this out during this. But we're going to wire the first input on the Festo module to input zero and the second one to input one. And those are going to be pins one and three. And if we look over here, pin one is going to be the black and pin three is going to be the brown. So I find the black, I find the brown, and we're going to put those to inputs zero and one on our Micro 850. That'll take care of our two inputs. Now we have three outputs on this one, and those are going to be pins two, four, and six. If we look over here, pin two is black with white, Pin four is brown with white, and pin six is red with white. And we're going to connect those to outputs four, five, and six. Now that takes care of the wiring of our 15 pin connector, but it does not take care of our wiring. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you know now we're going to ask, do I have current? And we absolutely do not because we're taking positive power to input zero and input one, but we don't have that return path. So we are going to take COM zero and COM1 to the minus of our power supply. That is the right set of terminal. And we're also going to take our minus CM0 and minus CM1 to the zero volt. And then we're going to take our plus CM0 and plus CM1 to our positive. Now, if that made your head spin, don't worry. We have a video that explains exactly how to wire up a micro 820, and it'll be in that playlist at the end as well. At this point, you should have zero volt or the right set of terminals on both COM0 on the top and COM1. And then we have pin one of our 15 pin connector going to input zero, 
pin two going to input one. And on the bottom, we have plus 24 volt going to plus CM0 and plus CM1. We have zero volt going to minus CM0, minus CM1. And then our three outputs are gonna be output four on pin two, output five on pin four, and output six on pin six. Before we go any further, let's test the integration between our PLC trainer and the Festo Didactic Conveyor. And we're gonna start with a new program in Connected Components Workbench. And I'm gonna call this my Festo Conveyor. Then go into Controllers, Micro 850. And in my case, I'm gonna go into the L50E and I have a 2080 L50E 24QBB. We're gonna hit select, add to project. And you're gonna think I'm crazy at this point, but we're gonna go ahead and download this blank program here because we can use this to test our IO before we start doing any programming work. Also, if you need any help downloading your program or I went too fast through wiring or how to create a program, hit the subscribe button because we have lessons on all of that. And I'm gonna go into ethernet and our default IP address on our PLC trainer is 192.168.110. I'm gonna click okay. Uh oh, okay, now this prompt is important because yeah, well, and here you go, you're getting, real-time learning opportunities because this one was unplanned and this one is incredibly important with all the Micro 800 PLCs. I forgot to set the IP address. Now we have videos talking how to get through this, but since we've ran into it, it says downloading of current ethernet settings will result in disconnection from controller. Continue downloading with ethernet settings. This is the most important prompt to read that most of you will not read because you're waiting to put this in run mode. And normally this will say we're putting it in run mode and you just hit the yes and you lose your ethernet settings. So we're gonna click no to this one. And now it's gonna ask us if we wanna put it in rim run. But notice it just pops up exactly the same. We're so casually hitting the yes button. We're gonna hit yes to that one. And now since I forgot it, I will go fix my ethernet settings. And you can watch the next Festo series on material and handling to see how we should have done that right. But we're gonna to go to ethernet here. And it says the settings in the project and controller are different. Update from controller. We're gonna simply hit the update from controller. And down here, you're gonna see this change to our IP settings. All right, now let's open up our global variables and we can see our inputs and outputs. And we've wired to input zero and input one. And we're gonna start by putting our finger over top of the sensor on the front of the trainer. And when I stick my finger in front of it, we are getting inputs. Now I'm gonna stick my hand over top of the other one and we're not getting it. Now hold on before you start grabbing your wire and jerking something out. This is part of the learning exercise. So the sensor on the front is an optical sensor. So when I stick my finger in front of it, you can even see a little bit of the glow of the light. So it's shining light out and looking for a reflection of something. This is an inductive sensor. And what that means is it's looking for things that current can flow through. And so this conveyor comes with shiny parts, which are metallic, and black parts, which are plastic. If I stick the black part in front of it, then it's not going to sense anything. But if I place the metallic part in front of it, then it's going to sense it. So let's start working out some descriptions for I.O. Input zero is going to be metal part present. And I'm just going to put inductive. And then one is going to be part present. And it's optical. Now let's go up and test our outputs. So our first output was wired to output four. And if I check the box on output four, our solenoid comes down. And if I uncheck the box, it goes up. Next, if we check the box on output five, the conveyor runs forward. And finally, if we check the box on output six, it appears that nothing is happening. But if you listen in, and I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but you will hear it on yours, is there's a click happening here. And if we check the bot, and as we're hitting input six, we can see the relay back here moving. But the reason we're not seeing any motion is output five is not a conveyor forward, it is a conveyor run. 
and output six is reverse. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check output six, and now I'm gonna check output five, and our conveyor runs in reverse. Now a few troubleshooting tips if yours doesn't seem to be working is stick your finger over the optical sensor, and you should see the two illuminate. The inductive sensor, and you should see the zero illuminate. When you check the box on output four, you should see one illuminate, that's our solenoid. When you do output five, you'll see three illuminate. That is our conveyor run. And when you do six, you'll see five illuminate. That is conveyor reverse. Now that we know that our integration works between the Festo conveyor and our PLC trainer, I want you to go back and add our wiring enough to get started wiring. And that is gonna be buttons one through four and lights one through four. And once you've done that, then you're gonna be ready to follow me over here where we're gonna start programming this conveyor.